Thank you. Okay. Now we have a repeat with of Sarah. It's the glasses. I turned it on. There you go. Thank you. All right. Hello. Can everybody hear me? All right. John, can you hear me in the way back? Mara, can you hear me? Very good. Well, thanks for having me uh, back out again this year. This would be my third year being here. But as TC mentioned, I am no longer. Sorry, let's get this situated. I'm no longer with the Gilmore City Bradgate School District, but um, pursuing things with the Iowa Family Gardening Homestead and Dibble and Bloom by Marla Raymakers. So if I was thinking about it more, I would have done the FGHI farm, but I did FGH, the IFGH, like the alphabet, whatever. I just thought it was important to say where I was from first and then go into the Family Gardening Homestead. So IFGH, all right? So that's how you can remember that. So. Um, today, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about pollinator plants, and Sarah did a great job touching on a few things, and there's just such a broad, wide, lots of information that you could know about pollinator plants, um, but I'm going to touch on a few things um, that I think are important for pollinators. Um, I've kept bees, I've kept monarch butterflies, um, you know, I feel like there's a lot you can know, and um, you don't know until you until you find out, until you know. So. I will be asking for audience participation. That's kind of my jam. So um, I will be thinking about this. I'll need four participants. So, you know, get your hands dusted off, get the food out of your hands, which by the way, thanks so much for a great meal. Where's our caterer crew at? Did they leave? Thank you so much for a great meal. Give them a hand. So, all right. So first off, um, one of the things I want to touch on is I want you to be starting to think like the pollinator that you're wanting to attract. So um, I have a little handout on the table over here, um, kind of focusing on hummingbirds, butterflies, and bees, okay? So there's lots of other pollinators, beetles, other little insects, mice or even pollinators. Anything that can move pollen around is considered a pollinator, right? So I just focus on three, because three is my favorite number, and that's what I do. So to start off with, um, if you're a pollinator um, and you're a hummingbird, Tell me what you know about hummingbirds. Somebody from the audience, raise your hand. Tell me what you know about hummingbirds. They fly really fast. They fly really fast. Very good. Thank you for participating. They're territorial. They're here for a short time. They are here for a short time. Now, are they here during the winter? No, they're here like May through September, somewhere in there. So you can start putting your hummingbird feeders out then um, and leaving them out until it gets cold. I would fly away too if I had the chance. All right, what else do you know about hummingbirds? They like red. They like red. How do you know that they like red? Seems like you definitely see them on red flowers. Right? It seems like you see them on red flowers. You know how else I know that they like red? It's because when I go to bomb guards or any farm store, all of the hummingbird feeders are red. Someone else decided that they like red, so I said, okay, well, that makes sense. All right, so um, another thing about hummingbirds I think that you need to key in on is what what about their structure do you know about hummingbirds like besides that their wings move really really fast what else do you know about the their body makeup what does it look like they have a long beak, they have a long beak. now inside that long beak do you suppose it's a long tongue or a short tongue a long tongue okay so here's where i need some audience participation i need four people that are willing to stand up here and help me pretend like you're a hummingbird, okay? Okay, I need two people that are gonna be flowers, so you really don't have to do much besides stand here and look pretty like a flower, okay? So I need two people. Would you like to be a hummingbird? Yes. Okay, I need one other hummingbird and two flower people. Two flower people. You'll be a flower, great. I need you to hold this plate, please. All right, I need another flower. I need another flower. Are you gonna be a flower or a hummingbird? You'll be, let's have a hummingbird race against these two little hummingbirds here. Okay, I need one other flower. See, I have a little shot glass, all right? It has Iowa on it, so that means it must be good, right? All right, hold that. All right, so. I need you to take this and pour it onto that plate. 
Very good. Now I need you to hold this. All right, my lovely flowers, I need you to stand right here. One of you stand right here, face the audience, and the other flower stand here and face the audience. All right, my little hummingbird babies. So sorry. I need you to pick out your favorite color. Very good. All right, good. So now, what do you suppose the water on the plate and in the cup is representing? If those are flowers, what do you suppose that's representing? Um, it helps the flowers grow, and then the plants can grow for the hummingbirds to suck their tongues on. Yeah, so very good. Let's give her a hand. Nice answer, yes. So that's right. So in this in this flower, there's nectar. But in this flower, there's also nectar. Okay, so hummingbirds, I need you to go out. And I need you to search, but then I need you to come back and drink from these two flowers, okay? One of you to this one, and one of you to that one. Ready? I want you to go go to that golf cart, and then race back. Just touch that golf cart and come back. See how fast they go? Oh, yeah, those hummingbirds. They're territorial. They're, get out of my way. Okay, one person here. One person here. Now drink that water as fast as you can through the straw. Through the straw. All right, as fast as you can through the straw. All right. Oh, it's a tight going. race. Oh, my goodness. And we have a winner. All right. So this gets to my point. Good job. You can hold on to that straw if you so so desire, or you can throw it away. Okay. And then you can just dump the water out. Thank you. Let's give a hand to my flower experts. Very nice. Okay. You guys can go sit down. Okay. Good job. All right. So my point being is that... When you have a flower that has a wide base, the nectar is going to be more spread out, okay? But when it's in a long tubular flower, it's going to be kind of centrally located. So who got done with the water first? My example over here, right? So if I was a hummingbird, I'm going to wind, want to find flowers that are shaped long and slender, just like my beak, so I can get in there and slurp up the nectar. Does that kind of make sense? You should go like this because it makes sense, okay? Uh-huh. So, so thinking like a pollinator that way, so you're going to want to pick flowers that have the ends of their flowers drawn out so that way they can get their beaks in there and essentially be drinking a puddle of nectar in the bottom, okay? Make sense? Very good. All right, so then moving on to butterflies, what do you